Hi, I'm Nick Presnell. This video introduces the basic characteristics of connectives as they are used in propositional logic. I'll cover their basic definition, how they are symbolized, and their truth values. The truth value of connectives will be covered in more detail as I introduce truth tables in another video. So what is propositional logic? Aristotle's logic, the first system of logic to be invented, focused on how categories of terms relate to one another in arguments. Each claim in the argument had to be stated in one of four types of claims, and the claims needed to be organized into the argument form called syllogism. For instance, all dogs eat meat, Spot is a dog, therefore Spot eats meat. In categorical logic, each claim relates to a subject term such as dog to a predicate term such as eats meat. We can make inferences from the two premises of a syllogism to its conclusion. Propositional logic follows the basic principles of Aristotle's system, but extends it dramatically. First, it deals with the truth value of entire claims or propositions, not just parts of claims. Second, it uses a more flexible symbol system that allows us to analyze much more complex arguments than just two premises and a conclusion. The result is a system of logic that can deal with many more claims and arguments than Aristotle's system. Propositional logic is built around a small number of logical connectives. Connectives are symbols that represent logical relationships between propositions or statements. Connectives function somewhat like the English terms and, or, if then, if and only if, and not. However, logical connectives express more exact logical relationships than natural languages such as English. Natural language words and sentences often express multiple meanings depending on the context, so not all the meanings of natural language can be captured in propositional logic. But it is a huge advancement in flexibility compared to categorical logic. Here's a table that shows the approximate English equivalent of each connective, its name, and the symbol that we'll be using for each connective. The symbols used to express the same concepts vary somewhat depending on the textbook or application but they all mean exactly the same thing. We'll explore each connective in detail and you'll see this table again at the end of the presentation. Before we look at the connectives I want to point out that I'll use the term statement rather than proposition. Logicians make the distinction between the two terms but their difference isn't relevant for this presentation. This choice is just for current convenience and the differences between these terms may be relevant in other contexts. Connectives join two simple statements into a compound statement. A simple statement is a statement that does not contain any other statements, and a compound statement is a statement that contains two or more statements. The bus is late is a simple statement. The store is open is another simple statement. If we join the two statements with a connective, for instance, the bus is late and the store is open, we've created a compound statement. Capital letters are used to refer to the statements that are linked by connectives. You can use whatever capital letter is handy, perhaps to remind you of the statement, so long as you haven't used that letter already. You can't use the same letter for a different statement. So suppose you want to symbolize the sentence, Fred is flying to Chicago. You could use F or C to refer to it. But if you also have the sentence, Francis owns a Ford, you might want to use C or any letter except F for the first statement and F for the second one just to remind you of the original sentences. There are no strict rules about which letter to use so long as it is a single capital letter that only refers to that same statement in that context. The conjunction joins two statements in a similar way as the English AND. The statements joined by the conjunction are each called conjuncts. A dot is used to express the conjunction. If I say, the fence is white and it is raining, I've expressed a compound statement composed of two simple statements that are joined by the conjunction. We might symbolize the first statement with a W and the second with an R. So the symbolic representation of this statement is W dot R, which would be read as W and R. Suppose I say, Bruce is friendly and honest. 
This can be rewritten as Bruce is friendly and Bruce is honest. So we might symbol it as F dot H, read as F and H. The conjunction cannot adequately capture all the meaning expressed when the word and is used in English. For instance, suppose we translate the compound proposition, I watered the dry grass and it turned green, as the conjunction of, I watered the dry grass and the grass turned green. As a conjunction, it doesn't matter if these two events happened in that order or even if they are related at all. But the order of the events and their relationship is part of the meaning of the English sentences. It would imply something different if I said, the grass turned green and I watered the dry grass, than if I said, I watered the dry grass and the grass turned green. The proper translation of and as a conjunct would allow the two statements to be reversed in order without changing the meaning of, this comp of the compound statement. But in this case, the order of the sentences makes a difference in the meaning of the sentences, so translating, translating them as a conjunctive wouldn't be appropriate. Now let's look at the truth value of conjunctions, in other words, when conjunctions are true or false. For the conjunction, both of its simple statements must be true for the compound statement to be true. For the fence is white and it is raining to be true, the statement the fence is white must be true and the statement it is raining must be true. If either statement is false or if both are false, the conjunction is false. The disjunction is a connective similar to the use of OR in English. Its symbol looks like a V and is called a wedge. So the example, the fence is white or it is raining, can be symbolized as W wedge R, read as W or R. There are different ways that OR can be interpreted in English, most commonly as an inclusive or exclusive disjunction. In the inclusive disjunction, one or both of the claims can be true but both can't be false. In the example, bricks are heavy or cotton candy is sweet, both could be true, one could be true and the other false, or the first statement could be false and the second statement true. In the exclusive disjunction, only one of the two statements can be true. For instance, in the sentence, the elevator is going up or down, if the statement the elevator is going up is true, then the statement, the elevator is going down, must be false, and vice versa. The truth of one statement excludes the truth of the other statement. Here we'll assume disjunctives are always inclusive. In other words, disjunctives will be true if either one or both statements are true, and false only if both claims are false. The connective called the conditional is similar to the use of if-then in English. The first term in the conditional is called the antecedent, and the second term that depends on it is called the consequent. It is symbolized by a horseshoe with the ends pointing to the left. I'll use A here to refer to the antecedent, and C to refer to the consequent. The conditional can also be expressed as A implies C or A only if C. The phrase only if introduces the consequent even if it appears in the beginning of a statement. For instance, only if you give me twenty dollars will I wash your car means the same as if you wash my car then I will give you twenty dollars. Remember, if introduces the antecedent and only if introduces the consequent in a conditional. Now let's look at the truth value of the conditional. Suppose I say if you get an A on the final exam, then you'll get an A in the class. If you do get an A on the final, and you do get an A in the class, my compound statement is true. But suppose I say, if you get an A on the final, you'll get an A in the class. You get an A on the final, but I don't give you an A in the class. You would probably say, I didn't tell you the truth. If the antecedent is true, and the consequent is false, the conditional statement is false. Now suppose you don't get an A on the final, but I give you an A in the class anyway. Did I lie? No, I didn't say that getting an A on the final was the only way you could get an A in the class. Just that if you did, that would guarantee you would get an A. 
Maybe you were doing so well in the class that even though you got a B on the final, you still earned an A for the course. So if the antecedent is false and the consequent is true, we'll still count the conditional statement as true. Suppose you don't get an A on the final and you don't get an A for the course. Did I lie? No, that's what you would expect, given what I originally said. So again, the compound statement is considered to be true, this time even though both the antecedent and the consequent are false. This may seem counterintuitive for some statements, and the conditional can't always represent the full meaning of an English sentence that uses the phrase, if then. So remember, for the conditional, the only time it is false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. If the English sentence you are trying to translate into logic doesn't make sense if you stick to this rule, it may not be appropriate to translate it as a conditional. The next connector is the biconditional, also called equivalence. It is expressed by the English if and only if, and the symbol for the connective is the triple bar. For instance, the fish swim upstream if and only if it is spring. It can be expressed as F triple bar S. The biconditional means the same thing as two conditional statements with the terms reversed and connected with AND. So the fish swim upstream if and only if it is spring means the same as if the fish swim upstream it is spring and if it is spring the fish swim upstream. For a biconditional compound statement to be true both of its statements must have the same truth value, either both true or both false. The biconditional is only false when the two statements have different truth values. Finally, we come to the connective called negation. It is expressed with the English not, or it is not the case that. It is expressed with the tilde, a character on the keyboard, usually just to the left of the number one key. Negation is the only connective that doesn't connect two statements. Instead, it changes the truth value of a statement by placing the tilde directly in front of a statement. For instance, George is not going to the store can be expressed as tilde G. Sometimes using the phrase, it is not the case that, helps clarify that you are negating a statement. So, it is not the case that George is going to the store means the same as George is not going to the store and both can be expressed as tilde G. When a statement is true, the tilde changes it to false, and when it is false, it changes it to true. Here's the table shown earlier, summarizing the connectives, their English equivalent, and their symbols. Since connectives are basic to propositional logic, you should become thoroughly familiar with them and understand their truth values to move forward in your study of propositional logic. Here's a summary of the truth conditions of connectives. Notice that for all connectives that form compound statements, all but biconditionals have one unique combination of truth values of its simple statements that make the compound statement either true or false, and all the other combinations the opposite value. If you can remember that unique combination of truth values for a connective, you will immediately know the truth values of all the other combinations. The conjunction is true, if and only if both statements are true. All other combinations are false. The disjunction is false if and only if both statements are false. All other combinations are true. The conditional is false if and only if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. All other combinations are true. The biconditional is true if and only if the two statements have the same truth value. Negation doesn't join two statements but merely changes the truth value of a statement to its opposite. Recall that one advantage of propositional logic over categorical logic is its ability to deal with much more complex statements. In further videos, we'll explore how to evaluate truth values of complex statements, beginning with the use of truth tables. Thanks for watching.